The word environment is most commonly used to describe nature and means the sum of all living and non-living things surrounding an organism or group of organisms. However, in environmental science, we define the environment as all elements, factors, and conditions that impact the growth and development of certain organisms. The environment includes biotic or all the surrounding living organisms and abiotic factors like light, temperature, water, atmospheric gases combined with the biotic factors that influence observed organisms. In a nutshell, the environment is the total of all the conditions which include the physical, chemical, biological, social, cultural, and economic factors surrounding the human or other organisms being at the given point in space and time. The term environment is used for surroundings and is derived from French word environ or environer, which means around or in circle or surroundings. The environment may be defined as the complex of climatic, biotic, social, and adaptive factors that act upon an organism and determines its form and survival. The environment provides resources that support life on the earth and help in the growth of a relationship of interchange between living organisms and nature. The environmental science can be defined as an interdisciplinary study of how the earth works, how we are affecting the earth's life support systems, and how to deal with the environmental problem we face. The environment in which we live has been irreversibly affected by the advancements in technology and it has been affected for as long as humans have wielded tools to alter their circumstances. And we will continue to alter our environment to suit ourselves as long as we remain a viable species. But to do so wisely, we need to closely examine what we do and how we do it. We need to build a bridge between science and technology, with the science on the one side and technology on the other. In this part of our discussion, let me introduce the element of environment. The environment is constituted broadly of two components, non-living or physical and living or biological. Non-living or physical includes air or the atmosphere, water in the hydrosphere, and soil in lithosphere. On the other end, Living or biological consists of plants, microbes, animals, humans, etc., and collectively are known as the biosphere. Lastly, let us discuss the seven principles of the environment. We will highlight the basic environmental principles and emphasize our ecosystem because this is the only way we, our planet, can be protected and actions should be taken to solve our environmental problems. One. Nature knows best. Humans must understand nature, and in doing so, we can follow its rules to ensure a continuous and steady supply of resources. One must not go against natural processes or to the law of nature, because if any disruption is caused in the cycle of nature, this can bring imbalance to our ecosystem, which will negatively all forms of being. Two, all forms of life are important. Although mosquitoes are quite annoying, they perform an essential role in nature. In fact, we didn't realize that without them, some animals or insects would be hungry. It is easy to appreciate beautiful organisms like butterflies, especially if one knows their important role in pollination. The giant ones like elephants, whales, and alligators are the ones we respect next with fear or wonder and their product. But when it comes to unlovely, squirmy, and troublesome creatures, this principle is unusually overlooked. But we should treat all forms of life equally important. 3. Everything is connected to everything else. In an ecosystem, all biotic and abiotic components interact to ensure that the system is sustained. Any intrusion 
from outside may cause an imbalance and collapse of the system. 4. Everything changes. The environment is continuously changing. Organisms also develop through time. However, these natural changes have affected these changes with our current technology now cause problematic events for us. Humans should rethink their relationship with the environment because our belief that it is beneficial to the environment often turns out to be catastrophic. 5. Everything must go somewhere. Everything ends up elsewhere. It doesn't just disappear. For example, if you throw a piece of candy wrapper away, it disappears but does not cease to exist. It ends up elsewhere. Gases released in the atmosphere may spread, but they will end up a component of the atmosphere and be brought down by rates. In any particular type of waste should always be a concern to us. It may be a pollutant or a resource, depending on certain factors. Be a responsible person and throw your trash in a proper place. 6. Ours is a finite Earth. Earth's resources can be classified as either renewable or non-renewable. Renewable resources are those that can be quickly replenished by natural cycles, while non-renewable resources are those that cannot be replenished through natural cycles. Although renewable resources can be replenished, it is important to understand that these are renewable only if they are not overused and not destroyed by factors such as pollution. 7. Nature is beautiful and we are stewards of God's creation. Among all creatures, humans are the only ones made in God's image and have been given the right to have dominion over all His creation, being the most intelligent and gifted with reason. Humans can manipulate and create changes in nature for their own advantage. Yet, creation exists not to be ravaged or abused, but to be taken care of. Humans cannot exist without nature. They are co-natural with the environment they live in. If the environment they live in is destroyed, it will go homo sapiens. And that's it for our discussion for today. We hope that you've learned something from this. On the following video, we will discuss the structure and components of environment. Till next time, this is Based in Books, saying, Blessed is the one who reads.